gosh, there's a bunch over there. Holy moly. Is that one on top of the ridge there? That one doesn't look too bad. It's one of those species that you can actually do a free range hunt and not have to go to Africa in order to do it. It's right here in New Mexico. Yeah, he's definitely not alone. New Mexico's got a really unique system now where they call off range hunts and you can apply for these permits for basically any month of the year. So it just makes for a really unique opportunity uh, here in New Mexico. You know, we finally, this year at Swarovski, we took six guys and we applied. Mm -hmm. And you know, you said, hey, you'd be lucky to get one tag. That's true, that is very true. And our two guys here, Jason and Greg, our regional yep. sales managers, were lucky to draw. And yep. We drew the tag for the oryx, and, and I literally had to go on the internet and, and look the animal up. I, I had never even seen an oryx before. The coloration on their face is beautiful, black and white. When I saw it, it was just a real unique looking animal, real beautiful coloration, especially on their face with the three different colors, the gray, the white, and the black, and the contrast. Uh, they almost look like a ghost. Looking right back at me. I was a little disappointed I wasn't going to get to hunt oryx, but on the same token, I was kind of excited to come down here and, and be, you know, a, a bystander and really watch these guys go through the emotions of this hunt. You can definitely see why good glass is so important on this hunt. If they're not moving the way they blend in, all the rises, and if you don't have good clarity, you're going to miss a lot of that. It was much more challenging than I had expected. These are very wary animals. You've got to spot them from a long distance off. You know, they sometimes operate in, in larger herds and they're spread out. So you've got lots of eyes and ears looking at you. And you really have to decide whether or not you're going to make a stalk and how you're going to approach the herd and which animal you're going to look for. Being pretty good at sneaking up on these things, but just haven't found the right one yet. You know, ED put me on a stock yesterday morning and it was just one of the neatest things. We got real close to, to two oryx. They were kind of separated from the herd, the rest of the herd over in the watering hole. We didn't want to have them blow out and send the rest of the, the herd running off. But uh, we got so close, we were probably inside 50 yards of these two oryx and it was staring right at me and it just seemed like it was getting ready to charge. And they had real pointy horns and I whispered to ED, I said, if he comes at me, I'm going to shoot him. And he said, well, don't be a whip. It was. Uh, just really need to get that up, up close and personal to those animals. Well, guys, it's close. Too close again, huh? We're seeing them, we're just getting a little too close. Well, I guess that's a bad problem to have, <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. We still got plenty of daylight left today. And there's lots more work to look at. All right. Coming down to hunt here in southern New Mexico, it's almost a little bit of a throwback hunt for me. I mean, certainly it's about the terrain. You come down here and you just have a lot of images of the Old West and how these guys settled and came through here. But then you get on a lot of these places down here where you're seeing buffalo and you're seeing desert bighorn sheep and a lot of game that we're not typically used to seeing. So, you know, just to come down here and, you know, hunt the oryx, but also see some of these other species has just been an awesome experience. I think they killed I mean, 360,000 acres. I mean, we won't even begin to touch what this ranch has to offer. We're looking at some orcs, and they're probably two miles away. And before you spend the time and energy and walking over there and spend a lot of time out in this heat, you really want to make sure it's something you want to go after. ED, how many do you think are in that herd? Yeah, I see at least seven in there. There's two that look really good, like we should probably go take a closer look at. Yeah, I think you're right. So yesterday morning, we got out there around 7 o'clock. We spotted a herd of about seven animals. You know, you can tell, you get out of the truck and as you start to think this might be the one that we're going after, you, you get a little more jump in your step and you start walking a little faster and then that excitement level and that adrenaline, and it's sort of like a, a switch flips and the intensity of the hunt kind of goes up a couple of notches. I'm gonna be up against those rocks. I'm gonna drop my binoculars too. Well, we got within about 300 yards in a rock pile. They were covered up by some brush. Yeah, see yeah, yeah. I see two of them behind the bush there. There's a couple others behind that bush on the right. You think how far is that? I'm at 200 right now. 315, go ahead, set your curtain. Okay. 300. Okay, I'm gonna put a 300. Toughened by evolving in Africa, the oryx needs to be hit in the right place, in the heart-lung area, and even then, there's no guarantee it'll drop. We just had perfect position. We were just waiting. They had no idea we were there. I'm looking through the scope, and, and then he said, okay, here's our oryx. It just turned broadside, and I thought I had the 
perfect shot. And I'm lurched up. I thought it was going to drop right there. And these things are like tanks. And it went over the hill and. Good shot. Good shot. Was it a good hit? It's a good hit. They're tough animals. We got collected ourselves. And we were pretty confident that we were going to find it on the other side of the hill, probably piled up. And he's down. Nice. <laughs> it was an incredible journey, incredible, incredible hunt. And I'm just overwhelmed by, by how tough these things are. Oh, this is a great feeling. Tell me about it, brother. Awesome Woo. job. Good job. Thank you, guys. Good job. Thanks for sticking with me. You know, we came into this trip talking about how tough these animals are. And their will to live is just, it's just amazing. Cool. Look at this. Well, we first started talking about this hunt. You said you went online to really look at the arts. And yeah. And now you got your hands on his horns and things have come full circle. Hopefully we'll get our hands on another one. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Nice job. Thanks. Definitely shooter. For Zwarovski Optic North America's Jason Gebhardt, it's been a maximum effort with so far no oryx. Greg Enos, on the other hand, made a perfect shot and collected a large old bull. For Gebhardt, the hunt goes on, but the time is running out as the oryx run away. Day one, we got it. We saw a lot of good animals. We got a good idea of what was on the ranch, put in a couple of good stocks. Uh, yeah, it's a ways away. Day two, we were able to get up on a bunch of animals and get within good range, but then when they winded us, we were we were done. <laughs> there you, go. you tell me which way we need to go, and we'll, we'll follow. Pressure was on. It was day three. It's the last day of the hunt. We had to produce that day. Greg had shot his animal uh, the day before, so we kind of decided we were all going to go out and help Jason try to find one. So we get out, we start seeing a lot of animals. We would see them, they were out there, they were everywhere, but we just could not find anything to get on. Then around nine or 10 o'clock, you start to think, you know, I'm, this is the last day, I'm going home without a trophy. And you start to mentally prepare yourself for that. You know, we started out in the morning and and we got up really high on this good vantage point and we spotted a really good herd. I think there were 18 or 19 animals in there. The problem was we could only see eight. And since you can only see eight, you have to assume there are a few more in there. But we got in there about 50 yards and blew one that we couldn't see out. And there was no way anybody could have seen that animal. It was right in the middle of a thicket. And he just took off out of there and picked up the rest of that group and they headed straight west away from us. We knew, you know, that portion of the hunt was over. You know, the, the wind kind of comes out of you and, you know, you think, boy, he's been working so hard for the last few days, is he ever gonna get on an animal? When you blow a stock, it's done. You're done with those animals. You have to go find another group to get on. I felt at that point that the hunt was over. I just, you know, I knew that we'd push those animals out of there. We were, you know, which made every animal in that area skittish. And we were going to have to change areas to really do anything. So if I got one more chance at this, I was going to be really lucky. Jason Gebhardt's feeling a mounting sense of frustration as the last hunting day winds down. Now, it's his final chance to close in on a trophy bull. So we all got together and decided it was time to start glassing. We started uh, to glass from two different vantage points to see if there was anything else around there. Petey, I think that's a pretty good arc down there. We probably need to get in a little closer and really size him up, but he looks a lot bigger than what we've been seeing. At about 11 o'clock, we bumped into the other group. Hey guys, right over here behind us, we've got a pretty good animal. There's only a couple hundred yards over the hill, so we should be able to get up over the wind perfect for you. Perfect. Good. All right, good luck. All right, cool. We backtracked out of there, our motto, Steve and I. We saw what we thought was an oryx. Dean and Greg and their crew were a little bit closer, and they confirmed that it was indeed a single oryx. We had a feeling that this was probably going to be our last chance. This was a do or die, no mistakes hunt from here on out. So we decided to put the stock on from up high, use the mesquite to our advantage, and stayed real low, real quiet, real slow, all the way down. Let me range you. It's 223 yards from right here. Okay. Got a little closer. Sure. 
The blood was pumping, the excitement was high, the hands were shaking. For once in these last three days, luck was on our side. It turned broadside at 120 yards and stopped. Good. Get, get him now. A money shot. It was right there in the bread basket. And it disappears down out of view. Ooh, I'm a little bit shaky. That was intense. You kind of get that sinking feeling as a hunter. Like, you know he made a good shot, but on the same token, until you recover that ammo, you're not 100% sure. You hit it pretty good, Jason. So okay. it's a good possibility, you know, it'll be laying up here over the hill. You kind of just hopefully we can find him right there. All right. So we worked our way around. Then there we had an animal. Let's go take a look. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Finally. Uh, three days, two and a half days now, and able to finally get on him. It's about time. You know, he put so much time and effort, and we've been talking about this hunt for the last six months, and we get down here, and, and we go through the heat and the terrain and getting on animals and not getting a good shot. And now you know he's going to experience that feeling as a hunter to walk up on that animal for the first time and put his hands on those horns and just have that feeling of just ultimate satisfaction. Funny thing about it was, and we, we came down, and we got down really close, and all of a sudden we were there, and I was on, and when I go, the same thing as yesterday. I go, just like Greg, I go, yardage. What's his yardage? And the hair like, really close. Just shoot him. Well, Jason, it took you a little longer this week, but uh, we finally got the job done. It did. Thank you guys for, for spotting that for us. Yeah, we figured we, uh, we had to get something going for you. That's right. Oh, worked out really good. All the doubt finally leaves. The relief sets in. It's an incredible feeling. I hope that, uh, you know, the day that that feeling goes away is the day I stop hunting.